Damn, your yeah. hair grow quick. Yeah. Yeah. I got to take the off. Mm-hmm. Well, the God. Well, y'all want porn or y'all not? Just kidding. <laughs> It's the God cutting my hair on this tropical resort, you know what I'm saying? Coming to y'all live from Antigua in the Bronx. Can you hold one second? What's the matter? We can't film with sirens? Huh? We're in the Bronx. It's going to be all day, baby. <laughs> no, literally, like, the closer to the afternoon it gets, it's going to be more sirens. It's going to be sirens all the time? Yes, every time I get my hair cut, I do it in nature. Um, leveled up, we're on Showtime now, so I gotta start doing weird Hollywood stuff, so. When we're done here, rather than throw out my hair, he sprinkles the hair on the grass because it's a uh, natural fertilizer. The cycle, Kuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> you are really happy to get out the house, huh? I'm, <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you ever heard of baby feet? I used you used baby feet before? Oh, Fam, yeah. wow, wow. What an experience. Right. It's like, for normal people, it just kind of takes a couple layers off your feet. It looked like I have been like river dancing in battery acid. I've just been peeling strips of skin off my feet for weeks, and it's coming off like skin fruit roll up. And the nastiest part, I have to, I have to keep socks on in my house because my dog, he's like figuring out what's going on and he wants to eat the skin face because he's nasty. And I can't do that. That's just like, that's inappropriate. And it's called baby feet? It's called baby feet. It's like these plastic bags and there's some sort of like liquid kind of acid in it. Uh -huh. And it doesn't hurt immediately when you wear it. Like you just wear it and then you just rinse your feet off. And for like a day, you're like, oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. And then one day you're going to take a shower and like, you're going to look down. And it's going to look like a Jordan 1. But it's going to be on your skin. <laughs> just sitting right there. And not the mids. I'm talking about the full retro joints. That guy wrote that article, he was like, New York is dead, and Seinfeld was like, New York can never be, New York can't be dead. Listen, New York has died like 20 times in my life. We'll be fine. It's gonna come back. Hopefully, the best part of this, and you know, it's hard, you're not really supposed to say this, but the best part of COVID is bottle service is done. All right, we ain't bringing bottle service back when venues come back to New York, it's done. It's a wrap, sorry y'all. Going right back to uh, $9 Heineken's, the way it used to be, okay? You know what, they need to get rid of open container laws it's ridiculous it's only to help the cops raise money like let people drink even mothers against drunk driving is not against open container laws as long as you're not driving <laughs> like, do the math why can't i drink booze in the street hmm? and think about it if i have to drink in the street i have life problems like i need that alcohol right then and there so help a brother out like we'll do it regardless the closest thing we had to not having um open container laws was when they dropped limeritas because you could drink a lime marita in public, no one would judge you. Like I used to be drinking them in, on the train at 9 a.m. and people was like, wow, he enjoys his topical drinks. And it was like, no, I hate my job, okay? Get it right for that 9 a.m. meeting. Down to <laughs> the former magazine I worked at. Ooh, you motherfuckers. Every, every office hours. Every office hours, it comes up. I remember one time when I was working there, my mother was just like, every day you come home, you complain about this job. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's what life is, all right? Complaining about jobs. I was like, and another thing, here's what my boss did today. She was like, I don't wanna hear it, so. The key to having a bad job is being in a relationship so you have someone to beef to about it, okay? Everyone's nodding their head, they know the vibes. Oh, so he's all D, not you y'all you know the vibes. <laughs> and y'all shout out to everyone out here who, in the converse, where you're in a relationship with someone who always complains about their job. And you know what? At first you were sick of it, but you're like, oh, they're just gonna keep doing it. So let me just nod my head and pretend I'm even listening. And you just be like, yeah, wow, that's crazy. She did what? Yo, they wildin' at your job. Wow. Damn, babe, stay up. Whoa, that's wild. Did you go on LinkedIn? Damn. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Speak that, you're good. Just let them get it off their chest. My whole face is gonna fall apart. What song is that? This is this is uh, Bronx Spotify. You just sit outside and just hear No you, question. You just hear you tracks all day. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you want to have fun, press Shazam anytime you hear a dance hall song around here. Shazam is gonna be like, they're like, ah, T-O-K. While we're here, I should bring Will to uh, my old barbershop so you can fuck up the guys that used to fuck up my mustache. <laughs> he was the one giving you that uh, thin joint? Bro, I've gone through, before Will, I probably went through 60 barbers. Like, 
Barbers in New York are so flaky, bro. They're so, and then the worst is like when they realize you're a regular, then they take advantage. They're like, oh, you'll always be here. So then you start getting text messages like, yo, you at the shop? Yeah, I'll be there in 30. Like, no, I'm at the shop now. Like, I'm not waiting. Th or, yo, look, I got to go run pick up my son. Like, no, cut my hair. Or my favorite, yo, y'all, you fuck with beats? And then, you know. Now you got fucking DJ Premier over here playing some shit off his Facebook page. Back on the old network, they were just like, just go to any barber, you get reimbursed. So I would just go to any random barber in Williamsburg. Bro. No, man. You all right? All right? Now go back to that other show, and now you see why I was looking like V for Vendetta sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's funny. <laughs> okay. Poppy, Poppy, you want thin? No, I don't want thin. I don't want thin. Okay? Every now and then I fall asleep and I, over, I wake up and the clippers are right on my eyebrow. I'm like, what are you doing? Leave the eyebrows alone. He's like, you don't want the cuts? No, no cuts in the eyebrow. No cuts in the eyebrow, no cuts in the beard. So just always finding new barbers. And then here, you got Will. But then for a little while there, like when we were not on the air, I had, you know, like you look like hell. You don't have a haircut after a while. Not, I mean, now that we have COVID, everyone looks like hell, so it's acceptable. So I would like go to the barbers in the hood and stuff, but it becomes that situation where you don't have one particular barber, you just go to the barber shop and you have your preferred barber. And he's not there, you got your second runner up, your third runner up. But then the problem is the first barber starts flaking, so you're getting really good with the second barber. But then when you go, you get used to the second barber, but then the first barber shows up and then he got an attitude like, yo, you stole my customer. And you don't want to be like, yo, you wasn't here. So you got to let the second barber fight the first barber. And if it's the Bronx, they might shoot each other. So what do you do there? Now you got to go to the third barber. The worst is what? The fourth barber. The guy that has shorts always open. <laughs> the fourth barber is the barber that, oh, his outfit is always immaculate. And he's always cleaning his station, but he never has a client. He knows everything about sports. He's, he, oh, he's, he got control of the Bluetooth. He's going to play in the music. No, God. and he's shaving himself. He's always shaving himself. And you're like, yo, if you're so good, how come you got no customers? What's going on here? He want to talk to you, do limericks, all types of shit. Telling you facts. <laughs> yo, just cut my hair. You know, you know, the Bronx originally had muskrats. So they used to do a lot of fur trapping. I'm like, my man. Facts. Also, it's always great if you have jailhouse barbers, like two or more inside the barbershop, and then they start arguing about jail shit and really specific jail shit. like which jail had the best coffee machines or like what floor in um, Murray Boltram, no, not Murray Boltram, OBC, Only Bus Can Control, and Rikers, they're like, which floor has the best views? Very specific things. That gives you a little sense of protection. You know no one's running up in that barbershop. They ain't trying to get aired out. This is, it's basically the barbershop from Belly. My barber actually left the barbershop. Yeah? After this quarantine, after this whole quarantine thing happened, he was like, how come your house? Yeah, I've seen it in my building, they got barbers coming through, but like, it's not like Will, who's taking COVID tests and taking precautions. Like, these barbers coming through with hookah. <laughs> <laughs> my barber came through with an ass. Oh, have you heard of this guy, Alex Jones? I was like, oh yeah. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> listen, listen. It's so Alex easy. Like, that stuff, some of the barbers with the old uh, rumors, whatever they talk about, it's always like so. There's so many holes in it. You're just like, Listen, do I want to poke a hole in this? Or that's the beauty of it? that's the beauty of the barbershop. Logic's out the window. You can say as long as you say something with your chest, other people believe it. You can be like, you know what? Uh, Michelle from Destiny's Child invented coronavirus, and people be like, yeah. You stop for a second, and someone in, you just wait, and you hear someone in the back be like, yo, I heard that too. It all has to be like something, just a, a little bit of a fact, not the whole fact, just a little bit of a story, taken the wrong way. There it goes. It'd be like, um, yo, oh, Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion because Megan the Stallion's an ISIS. And you'd be like, and you stop and you're like, hmm. She did say she's a savage. You're like, oh, wait, wait, hold up. Is Tory Lane still free? I think he's out on bond currently. That's gotta be a terrible feeling. Like, I mean, shooting someone's bad, but it's just like, you know, you're going to jail or at least court at some point. So, like, do you just wild out until they catch you? Or do you just chill and wait at home? You can't get seen outside right now. You know? Like, people are really on about it. Yeah. I mean, you can't just shoot making the sound, so. But you know what? He probably does have a boy that's some boys who are supportive and like, yo, you did the right thing. 
There's always there's always a, there's always someone like that in the hood. There's, I guarantee you, his phone was like, yo, yo, fuck what they talking about. You did what you had to do, bro. Like, but that always happens to the person that has the most money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can't take us to the bar no more and run. Yeah, also, like I'm talking to my boys, and they're like, yo, all these rappers is pussy. Why didn't they shoot him if they fuck with Megan? I was like. You speak rappers like when's the last time a rapper? Well, I was about to say when's the last time a rapper shot, shot somebody. somebody. <laughs> My neighbor was just like, she hasn't seen me in a while. She wanted to know what I've been up to. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, let me tell you, <laughs> I got this show on TV. We've been on for like twenty years now. They'll be like, you got a, you got. A, I heard you got a podcast. I'm like, <laughs> we got ice cream. Like, ketchup. Matter of fact, that's what we gotta do next. Ketchup. We are doing condiments next. Nah, you know what you need? You need to create the frozen chopped cheese. Frozen? They tried it. They could not. They couldn't pull it off. They couldn't pull it off. It does something about it. That, I have no idea how they pulled off the bacon, egg, and cheese, though. Like, I took a bite of that and I expected to throw up. And it works. <laughs> and it does taste like bacon, egg, and cheese in ice cream form. And it's weird. It's weird. Because like, I'm not even an ice cream person. I ate like five scoops of it. And then my stomach was like, what the fuck are you doing? No, I'm talking about a real chopped cheese. You got to create the frozen version. Like a... Like a real chopped cheese sandwich. Just frozen? Yeah. Frozen White Castle. Like a frozen White Castle, but chopped oh, cheese. I thought you and were that could about, be your new merch, son. I thought you were talking about eating like cold chopped cheese sandwiches. No! Like, that's, that's some next level shit. Y'all been creating... Y'all been talking about... How long have they been talking about chopped cheese? Forever. 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 Now it's time to make the chopped cheese frozen sandwich. So we should sell out the Bronx food and put it in stores everywhere? I like that. Yeah. I like that, yeah. That could work. Just like... Uh, little gentrification snacks? <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. You want you want your chopped cheese on a little brioche bread? Hmm? Hmm? 